We're on the floor at Gen Con. We're here at Geek Chic. This is Robert Gifford, instigator in chief for Geek Chic. Yep. Robert, it's nice to meet you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. You're entirely welcome. It's awesome. my pleasure. So give us a little bit, uh, like a brief history on Geek Chic. Uh, what, uh, what drove you to kind of form the company? Well, uh, this is our... Uh, <laughs> It's like a, it's like Ron, right? Any origin story of of uh, of what we what we uh, how it came to be is never going to be quite complete. So I, it's always like, mm, which which story do you want? Right. Which which of the stories? I, I think the key is is that you know I was a geek. Uh, I think like a lot of other geeks in history, they'd said you know, wouldn't it be great if there was a table? Wouldn't it be great if there was this thing? Uh, I just happened to be in a position where I was like, I could make that table and. And oddly, mostly we think mostly geeks when they get to that point that I can make that table. They make it and then they put it online and they say, "Look at my awesome table." But I, I, I kind of think that that doesn't help us. And so I realized that I could make the table and I could also make it for more than just me. And so I, I re when I realized that, I thought, uh, "Well, it's been like 40 years of of uh, role playing gaming and 50 years of commercial war gaming. I, I, uh, if I don't make it, maybe no one ever will." And I, so in 2008, I brought our Sultan, which is the biggest, grandest table that that, uh, that we make, to uh, Gen Con. And from there, it has been not, hold on to the tiger's tail and keep going. Because uh, it turns out that uh, I wasn't alone, that my, my instinct was right, and that we uh, all, of us, all of us as geeks believe that we do deserve nice things, turns awesome. out. Yeah. So what was your first design? What was the first table that you actually came up with? First table design I actually came up with was, was actually the Sultan, and the Sultan is this 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 kind of Cadillac gaming table is flipped down desks and uh, it is a uh, you know a, a fifteen thousand dollar beast. I think when we first came here, it was uh, nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, and people were like, uh, but but someone bought one right off the show floor that year, and uh, and said it's working, it works. So we, we can go from here. Have there been many changes to that table? I mean, have, do you go through different versions? Always. Like, uh, I, yeah. I think we're I think we're on I think we're on Rev five of that of that product itself, and we are always improving it. We're always making sure. They, they, Originally, there weren't drawers on the, in the ends of the of the GM station. There weren't there were all these little bits and pieces that 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 they're there. And we always are continuing to work and innovate on whatever the products are. Even our regular dining tables or coffee tables, they change and they and they just become better. It, it's one of those things where you say, I, I, "Are we done with this?" It's like never done, never ever done. Always figuring out what's better. So you take gamer reaction or gamer comments into into account when you're deciding okay. to make changes? Yeah, absolutely, of course. I mean, when people come in, if you you know, mostly people come in and say things that we've thought about tons. You know, but every once in a while, someone will say, "You know, there's this thing." A perfect example was in our cup holders. Uh, someone said, "You know, your cup holders they they pull out when I pull out the glass," and I said. Really, what glass are you using? And they were using really great, like bar uh, uh, glassware mm -hmm. for beer, you know. And they've got the very flat bottoms, which you don't have in regular houseware. And so it was creating condensation, and then it was sticking to the bottom and pulling the cup holder out. Gotcha. And I said, I can fix that. And we and we worked on it. We had we created these great like cork insets for this for this whole thing, and it actually helped everything all, all the way around. I think the greatest thing is is that as geeks, there's this one wonderful thing where we realize that the barrier to knowing something. There is none anymore. There's not a there's not a repository of information. I don't have to travel to Cologne to figure it out. You know, often we can find out anything we want to know in the entire world from the comfort of our home. You know, geeks, this is the age of the geek. People who are obsessively curious about whatever they want and just being able to go down whatever rabbit hole they want to. So I certainly didn't have a, uh, have a furniture design background, but I, I knew how to find out. And being able to go out and find out how to make this happen is what geeks are about. Geeks say, you can't prevent me from knowing what I want to know. So I definitely learned a lot in the course of you know, bringing this company online and figuring the job. I, I never made a piece of furniture before I started this company, and uh, now I've made many, many pieces of furniture. Yeah, we were taking a look at all of them earlier. Uh, Brenda was showing us around, and mm -hmm. we got a lot of beautiful things. Thank but you. The really exciting thing right now is we have a prototype for something you're working on right now. Tell us yes. about this table. Yes, uh, we've never actually showed the public this kind of prototype before. Usually we come out with something and it's very much like the, the polished beta if it's ever a prototype. And this is this is something that in a software world it's like a very early alpha or kind of a white model in a design term. So this is it. This is a, one of seven desks. This behind us is one of seven desks that we have identified as the genres that we can think we can provide innovation for and we are planning to do in the next couple of years. Uh, this is the first of it. It's our artist desk, and it it, it has uh, something you would see similar. It's like, oh, it's a drafting table. That's not quite a drafting table. So it's uh, because drafting table is a very specific thing, but it is it does put work at an angle, and and it does so in different ways. We we kind of solve some problems uh, that are here on this model. I'll give you a show. I'll give you a look yeah, around please, here. Please do, please do. So uh, 
So we have the primary tilted surface here, and the thing about a tilted surface generally is that is that the problem with it is, is that you know things come off of it. You know, you can't put something down. But if you create a magnetized, I guess, a wooden surface, then you can end up with a, a place that you can put whatever you need to put and pin it down and work with the tools right at hand, as opposed to uh, having to have tool bays in the center or around here. So it all puts the work right at your fingertips in a way. We use this. We use these kind of beautiful nautilus shapes to drive the uh, the, act, the, the action of this. And that and that moves it up and down. Now, if you have an experience with a with a drafting desk, exactly, you'll know that 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 now I just moved it. I didn't have to do anything. I can push on it. It's got zero give in that kind of way, even out at the edge. And so, and I don't have to lock anything down. It's quick. It's easy. You go right to it. There's a <clears throat> rail system around it. We use our same rail system we use on a lot of our other uh, items. So you can put that there. These also can magnetize yeah. and work onto that. Uh, and that's the that's the core features of, of what this is and what we're showing here. However, the other features in development are, are varied. Uh, there's a strong back that we have for monitor support. We're having a pivoting arm, uh, articulated arm here for Cinti graphic tablets or laptops, so they bring in and integrate a, a digital and a, a regular solution. This will have a storage base underneath, and we're, we have a design on the books currently where we're working on this being a pivoting out storage display, so you can have like a tab array uh, where you have uh, layers of of a usable uh, tools and items. Flip ups here, um, we're integrating a lamp solution here. And again, these are just the features. And then this tape, this surface itself, uh, we have a self-healing cutting surface, a light table surface, uh, a non-pore surface for, for working with uh, uh, painting and the like. And, and those should be able to be stacked. And so you can shuffle whatever surface you want right to the top. Awesome. Now, now this is again. These are features that are in development, and we're and we we realize that something about desks. I understand gaming, I understand dining, I understand the things that we're doing. The funny thing is that once we've got at desks, desks are so varied in their usage scenarios that we realized we kind of had to expand the pool, and so that's the reason that we're off. We are letting people buy into being part of the dev team. We're letting people get into into the line and be, get a two hundred fifty dollar deposit, and then they they get to be part of the dev team, and then they get to we, when we prototype all of it and we solidify it, they get they get to be moved into production prior to everybody else and the people who are part of the dev team will get their items, their their desks, you know, basically six to eight months before anybody else does at the very minimum. And it's and I can tell you the other desks are I'll read yeah, off the please. list. So, so this is the artist desk. The, the genres are: we have the workbench, which is the uh, we believe is a desk that is anything that you make with your hands. If you're a, if you're a painting minis, it'll be the paint, it'll be the mini painting desk. You know, as far as this goes, it will also be if you're an Adreno tinkerer, that's going to be it. Any time that you craft something with your hands, this is the desk. The stealth desk, which is our version of a secretary, a cabinet that becomes a desk, so it can be in a room that's not an office. Uh, we have the entertainment center. If you sit at your desk, you play six hours of games, you watch two hours of movies, and then another hour of YouTube. That's not a work desk. That's something entirely different. We think that there's a better way to do it. If you guys want to, to get involved, you want to join the dev group, contact someone from sales and get in, and it's a $250 deposit and get into the dev group. And if, you're, if you know that this, where you want us to make you your desk, get involved. Uh, and, but otherwise, if you're like, I don't know, I want to see what's going on, watch well, us on Facebook, honestly. Facebook is where we're kind of doing that kind of design, design blog and the, the way, way that you can kind of see it in development. That Facebook is where that's going to end up. Just a brief note, I think a D6 Mafia desk sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> but at the very least, man, thank you so much for taking time with us. Welcome. It's absolutely excellent. We look forward to everything. We love your products. Thank you. And I can't stress enough, Geek Chic, go get it. From the floor of Gen Con, this is Ryan for D6 Mafia.